Hello, my name is Paul Muller and I am the Director of Sales and Marketing at Validine Engineering. In this video, I would like to introduce you to our new P897V Vacuum Pressure Transducer. We will also cover the basic concepts of vacuum, atmospheric pressure, and how to make precision vacuum measurements. The P897V can measure very slight vacuums when ordered in its most sensitive full-scale range of 2.22 inches H2O. Of course, a version is available to measure full vacuum also. The accuracy of the P897V is 0.1% of its calibrated full scale, and this includes nonlinearity and hysteresis. The output signal of the P897V can be a voltage or current and ordering options allow the user to specify the direction of the voltage signal. For example, you can order a P897V with a voltage signal that increases positively with vacuum from 0 to plus 5 volts DC. Zero vacuum will equal 0 volts DC and full vacuum equals plus 5. Or you can specify that the signal increases in the negative direction such that the signal goes from 0 volts DC to minus 5 volts DC. A 4 to 20 MA current loop output that increases with vacuum is also available. A vacuum is simply a pressure that is lower than the local atmospheric pressure and the measurement of a vacuum is always referred to atmospheric pressure. If gauge pressure is defined as any pressure that is greater than atmospheric then a vacuum is technically a negative gauge pressure. A vacuum is sometimes called a partial pressure because it is some fraction of the atmospheric pressure. A vacuum is not the same thing as an absolute pressure, but they are related. Absolute pressure is a pressure referred to the absence of the local atmospheric pressure. And to confuse things even further, an absolute pressure of zero would represent a complete vacuum. The best way to understand vacuum, then, is to understand atmospheric pressure. The Earth is blanketed with an atmosphere that consists mostly of nitrogen and oxygen. The atmosphere extends upward from the surface of the Earth some 50 kilometers. The atmosphere is held to the Earth by gravity, and the force of the air column on the surface of the Earth is what creates our atmospheric pressure. Because air is a gas, it compresses and becomes denser near the surface of the Earth and less dense at altitude. Atmospheric pressure thus decreases with elevation. The first person to measure atmospheric pressure was Evangelista Torricelli, an Italian mathematician and scientist who in the 1640s created the first barometer by filling a glass tube, closed at one end, with mercury and then inverting it. He noticed that some of the mercury drained out of the tube and into a ball, but that a column of mercury remained standing vertically inside the tube. He reasoned, correctly, that it was the pressure of the atmosphere acting on the open surface of the mercury that kept the column standing in the tube. He also observed that changes in the weather caused a slight change in the height of the mercury column. Torricelli then carried his barometer on hikes up into the Alps, and he observed that the column of mercury was shortened with altitude. From this, he deduced that the atmospheric pressure varied with altitude. More precise measurements of atmospheric pressure and altitude were carried out over the centuries, and you can see in this screen how elevation affects the pressure of the atmosphere. At sea level, the column of mercury in Torricelli's bar barometer is 760 millimeters. But if you are in Denver, at an elevation of some 5,000 feet, the column is only 640 millimeters high. By the time you climb higher, say up into the Andes Mountains, the mercury column is just 380 millimeters high. And if you could carry the barometer to the highest point on Earth, Mount Everest, the pressure of the atmosphere at that elevation would support a column of mercury just 253 millimeters high. This is why mountain climbers must carry bottles of oxygen at high altitudes. The air is just too thin for proper breathing.
As mentioned before, at sea level the pressure of the atmosphere on an average day will support a column of mercury 760 millimeters high. If you are measuring in inches, the same column is 29.9 inches high. At one time it was common to hear a weather forecast that included the barometric pressure in inches of mercury. A more scientific approach evolved and this was to define a standard atmosphere of 760 millimeters mercury to equal one bar and then break this into 1,000 parts defined as millibars. This helped to standardize the weather forecasting around the world and made small variations in the atmosphere easier to record. As Torricelli noted all those years ago, the atmospheric pressure is affected by the weather. You can see how this looks when plotted on a weather map. Lines of equal pressure in millibars are plotted to reveal how the atmosphere is affected by weather patterns. In fact, extremes in weather can produce a change in atmospheric pressure on the order of plus or minus 0.7 psi. What all this really means is that in order to correctly measure a vacuum, you have to know the local atmospheric pressure and understand that it will be affected by elevation and weather patterns. Here is a hypothetical vacuum measurement application. A vacuum pump is connected to a closed vessel and proceeds to pump out the air. The pressure inside the vessel drops below atmospheric, perhaps to 12.4 psia, and this is the difference that the P897V will report. If the weather changes the next day and the local atmosphere increases to say 15.2 psia, the vacuum reported by the P897V will be the same because the P897 is referenced to the current local atmosphere through its reference port. As the inside tank pressure drops, the P897 will measure the difference with the local atmosphere, and this will be the same vacuum as the day before. In this example, measuring the absolute pressure inside the tank and controlling the pump on this signal would cause problems because the actual value of the atmosphere would not be taken into the measurement pumping down to 12.4 PSIA each day, and when the atmosphere was as high as 15.2, this would cause a much greater vacuum. The P897V transducer is distinguished by its cylindrical form factor as shown in this outline drawing. The diameter is just two and a quarter inches, and the overall height about eight inches. The positive pressure port is a one quarter inch male NPT connection located at the bottom of the unit. The atmospheric reference port is located at right angles to the positive port. This port has a straight thread female thread machined into the sensor body and the transducer is supplied with a quarter inch male NPT adapter fitting. Both the positive port and the reference port fittings can be changed by the user to accommodate different plumbing connections in the field. The positive port adapter can be removed from the sensor body, exposing a one quarter inch female NPT thread. Similarly, the reference port fitting can be quickly removed and replaced with whatever adapter is convenient. The electrical connector is the industry standard Amphenol PTO2A six pin military style connector mounted on the top plate. The zero and span calibration adjustments are also accessible here. The P897V can be ordered with the following signal types, 0 to plus 5 volt DC as vacuum increases, 0 to minus 5 volts DC as vacuum increases, or 4 to 20 MA as vacuum increases. This flexibility allows the user to determine the polarity of the vacuum signal coming from the P897, a signal that increases positively as vacuum increases, or a signal that increases in the negative direction as the partial pressure decreases. The P897V is available in full scale ranges as low as 2.2 inches of vacuum. This allows measurement of very slight vacuum pressures with high accuracy. Full vacuum ranges are also available that will cover any atmospheric pressure condition. The 
P897V is a highly accurate vacuum pressure transducer that is available in a variety of pressure ranges and output signal configurations. Thank you for viewing this video about our new P897V vacuum pressure transducer. I hope this has been helpful and informative. For further information about the P897V, check our websites and you can always call us to discuss your application.